I'm great. Uh, and oh. go find a beer. 20 minutes. Yep. Uh, <coughs> okay, hi. Uh, all right, uh, so I'll be as brief as possible. I tend to speak very softly, so if you cannot hear me or my English is not good, just uh, tell me. Uh, yeah, or show me. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about how we build feature at serve. So, is when you have, uh, when you're starting from uh, stories like the traditional um, Scrum stories, you will have uh, many things happening at the same time, and the way you usually will build this or build it into like um, staging uh, servers or whatever, it's either everything goes in or nothing goes in. But uh, so it doesn't make us very reactive. The day we are on microservices, it's going to be another story because we can really decouple things as much as possible. But in the meantime, uh, we had to find a solution because we have pr uh, business pressure. So how do we manage to build a monolithic app but still be able to deliver by feature, or at least to the uh, product uh, guys? So that's the talk uh, I'm, I'm going to give tonight. So uh, yeah, so acknowledgement, it's a teamwork. So I'm not alone. There is uh, people behind. So I want to just mention it. Uh, about me, are we going to skip this? This also. So that's the agenda. So what do we do at Serve? Uh, the stack we have. Uh, what is the problem we are solving? And uh, so the feature build, I have a few slides explaining what, what's happening. And I can also do a live demo of it. Uh, then back to the problem, like, OK, let's have some uh, retrospective on it. Uh, do we resolve our problem? What's the trade-offs on this kind of thing? Uh, what are the limits of uh, this solution? And uh, what uh, are the potential uh, enhancements? So there's a lot of DevOps in this thing. It's very uh, trendy to use the word DevOps. I'm not a DevOps guy. I'm, uh, I'm just a CTO, which in the end can be described as uh, doing whatever the team doesn't want to do. So I end up doing DevOps. <laughs> so, uh, so what do we do at Serve? Serve, we, have a, we are a Singapore-based startup. We, had, we are building a SaaS platform for SMEs. So typically, the um, air conditioning company is going to serve, service your icon in your, in your place uh, three times a year. Most likely, they're using a system. So for us, these are the kind of uh, customers we have. Those. Uh, small industrial companies that nobody really cares about when it comes to technology. So in the end, uh, before us, they're using a, a whiteboard and paper to organize uh, their business. With us, they use uh, technologies. So we have also a mobile aspect and so on and so forth. So I'm going to skip on this. So that's our uh, technology stack. So we have everything in uh, Spring, Java Spring on the back end, uh, AngularJS on the front end, data storage on MongoDB. The uh, Tomcat is the um, uh, where we execute the uh, the code, the, the web code. We want the rest, uh, Bootstrap, we don't care. Ionic. So yeah, we don't have native uh, mobile, so that's why we have the Ionic for now. But we are moving to uh, native. DevOps, what we, need, what we use to build, so we're using, uh, of course, the uh, Amazon Web Services. We're using uh, those tools called Packer, Terraform, from the HashiCorp um, uh, group. They're, they're doing uh, cool stuff. We're using Jira for the, the, um, the project management and this kind of thing. SonarQ for the quality, Jenkins to build, of course. So, so all these tools that I'm mentioning here are um, actually working under the hood to do what I'm going to present tonight. So that's what we, yeah. So that's what we try to solve. So yeah, having many features uh, come from the build everything or nothing state to um, uh, we build feature by feature and we can present them feature by feature. So schema that's the. Um, how it works for us. So for us, it starts from uh, a Jira ticket, which is a feature. Uh, it goes in GitHub. Then we will trigger some uh, command on Slack. Slack will uh, talk to Jenkins. Jenkins will build, actually, a uh, one-time uh, throwable uh, build job for that specific uh, feature. Then we invocate uh, Terraform. Terraform will build, actually, from the scratch, the whole infrastructure. So um, we are not recycling environment. We are building everything every time, and we're destroying at the end. So on your branch, I, I will show you on detail, don't worry. Provisioning-wise, uh, so then, sorry, then the job is, uh, is um, created. Then we execute the job. The developer executes the jobs when the code is ready to be shipped. Then uh, we provision, actually, um, the through and seeable. Um, um, I, that. I mean, well, and seeable is provisioning the stuff. And then uh, in the end, what we want is to provide to the um, product guys uh, name of the feature, .sg slash system. Then you can 
look at uh, what has been what has been built, and you can map it directly to the story described in the uh, in jar. If it's good, then it's passing it. We merge the code, and we can actually push it directly uh, into the uh, as a hotfix, for instance, and we can make it happen in the in production. So that's the way we bypass actually the limitation we have by uh, building a monolithic app. So uh, once we are yeah, so when we delete the, br the branch, then it will uh, destroy everything. So the infrastructure that has been uh, set up just for this is uh, gotten rid of, and uh, as well as the jo the Jira job, the Jenkins job. So uh, should I? Uh, where is uh, okay? I didn't track the time, so. So yeah, all starts in Jira. We have a branch. The developer will branch out. Name of the uh, name of the um, name of the branch in Slack. Uh, simple command slash serve branch uh, build. Okay. So what will happen is um, some 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 uh, some scripts will um, we do that. So find as a new branch has been created. Then uh, start to um, build the Jenkins job properly. Configure it. Then building infrastructure, so it takes a bit of time for Terraform to, uh, from a description of how the uh, technology stack is, to actually build it up. So it takes like a few minutes. Then uh, taking care of the DNS and all the stuff on uh, Amazon through uh, Route 53. And then uh, once that's done, then the thing is ready to be deployed. So the first time the developer has to ship the code, he has to build the specific branch using the Jenkins that has been just uh, created. So that's the infrastructure we're building actually every time. So from zero, we get, we're getting this. So in our case, we have the so the provider. We have three security groups. We have two instances for now, simple one uh, web instances, then uh, a DB. Uh, the EIP is uh, associated to each of the stack. A few uh, DNS. So that that's that that what is done in the background, and this is only for this specific feature. So uh, in Jenkins, it looks like that. Uh, we provision the branch through Ansible. So that's what the we give to the uh, product guy actually that URL. So that's the end result we're going to have. So this is, uh, and when we destroy, you just go in GitHub, you either merge the branch or you delete it. Then it will uh, actually, then run the, it will run the um, Slack uh, command again, and it will destroy everything and clean clean stuff. Uh, so in Slack, it's like this. So maybe I'll show you how, um, how it looks like in real uh, life. So I'm going to start in um, <coughs> GitHub. So I have a clone of uh, our project, and I'm just going to do something uh, simple. I'm going to uh, create a new branch. So let's call it uh, Jara dash uh, uh, six eight uh, seven. Yeah. So I have my new branch. Now I'm going to go in Slack. I'm just going to do uh, run the command. Uh, we also uh, did something. Uh, more for the fun of it, we actually have Slack, I mean, uh, Jenkins and the scripts to push uh, information on what's going on. <laughs> so it it's going to detect our, it's going to detect our branch. It's going to build stuff. So it's going to take like, yeah, two or three minutes. Uh, what is important is, if we're looking at the previous uh, run, you will get this link actually. So that's the, jar, the Jenkins uh, link. So I'm going to get one soon. So if I'm clicking on the link, then I'm getting in the unique. Uh, is this the, the Jenkins uh, yeah. uh, integration into, uh, into Slack? Yeah. Uh, no, not directly. That's uh, something we wrote ourselves. We have also a Jenkins integration, but it happens somewhere else in Slack, but we're using it. Oh, okay. So that's uh, just uh, our script getting the, the URL that has been created for the occasion through the, uh, the Jenkins API and uh, pushing it to, the, um, to Slack. So that's the so now the infrastructure is being built, and uh, once this will be done, then I'm going back to uh, Jenkins. I was just there, and I just need to run that Jenkins job, and it will um, uh, build a, build a binary, provision the finish to provision the stack because uh, now we are just building from scratch uh, with Terraform servers, but we don't have anything inside. We didn't uh, really set the host the DNS for the host name for instance, that kind of stuff. We didn't, uh, on the database side, we didn't uh, uh, load the dump that we are interested in. So this is what happened at the Jenkins job stage. And once that's done, we are just uh, ready to, uh, to um, connect to the, to the server. So yeah, taking a bit of uh, a few seconds. 
Uh, Any question uh, in the meantime? Your Jenkins is by your job name. <coughs> yeah. What happens if you run two, 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 two jobs of the same branch? Uh, two jobs of the same branch. The job is a uh, so the um, when you do st when you uh, invocate the uh, Jenkins uh, sorry the Slack uh, command right it will check whether there is uh, already a job running for this or not and if it's already running it will stop. Uh, okay, cool. So now I'm going back there. I can run this one. I can build actually. So the the thing is uh, yeah we will have only one build or maybe five builds for the same stuff. If uh, so if you have any. Um, uh, back and forth between the uh, the product and the, the dev. Like, okay, uh, you did this, but I'm not very happy. You just need to, uh, um, you, ju to you just need to uh, work again on this uh, branch. The same branch is going to modify stuff uh, and uh, rebuild again from that that job until uh, everybody's happy. And that job will disappear as soon as the either the uh, the feature is deemed ready to ship or acceptable from a product perspective, or uh, to be uh, dropped. So then they did. So if we're looking at, the, well, I guess you all, I mean, most of us are familiar with Jen uh, Jenkins, right? So that's what's going on here. So now it's uh, NCable, actually. Who's, um, so we also chose NCable uh, rather than uh, those uh, Puppet or Chef or whatever, uh, because we, we didn't want to have those um, uh, master seven kind of uh, relationship. We want to have something as straightforward, and uh, NCable is good for this. It's, uh, you don't need to have uh, uh, the same uh, kind of uh, infrastructure behind. So what we probably show wh what it does, yeah, you can see uh, it's um, what it does. So we're using uh, some binaries like supervisor D, for instance, to run some uh, on the web on the web stack some uh, some uh, not the GS uh, kind of thing, and uh, so configuration is is happening at that point. So on both uh, servers, and it crashed. <laughs> and it's the first time it crashed. So, but usually it crashed when you have the. So it's the um, Jenkins has this uh, uh, cargo feature to ship uh, a Java into a uh, Tomcat, and sometimes it does that. And it hasn't done that for a while. So what if I rerun again? There's some network issue. Yeah. Failed to resolve the host. You don't resolve the host. My screen is very small, so. Okay, what happens if I run it again? So if I'm looking back at the slide. Yeah, so I was afraid of the uh, Murphy's Law. But uh, we've been using it for uh, three months. Uh, it's the second time it happens, uh, honestly. So um, need to check that, but in the end uh, you would have seen the maybe I can have no I didn't ship right. Okay, another run, and if it doesn't work, then I'll uh, I'll move on. If we are going to the uh, AWS uh, view, you will see that things have been created. So that's also the power of those uh, tools like Packer and uh, Terraform. You can uh, you don't have to go in AWS and do things manually. So you just use those binary those uh, yeah binaries. You describe uh, for Terraform, for instance, you describe how your infrastructure looks like. I have this load balancer that's the behind this. Uh, uh, I mean, under this VPC, then I have this uh, security group. You just describe that, you link them together, program it, uh, I mean, in a, in a configuration file. And once you're done with this, you just run it through Terraform, and Terraform will take uh, charge to build this. It does that for AWS, but the same kind of discussion, you can apply it for many uh, providers in parallel. So you can do that on uh, uh, digital oceans and all those uh, at the same time. So if you have um, using uh, one, pro one uh, web services, I mean, AWS for one uh, in one case, and you're using for something else, uh, another one for whatever reason. You can actually um, integrate that together and uh, work it concurrently. So if you look at this, uh, our uh, our st stuff are here. So we have one machine here, we have the DB here, and if I'm looking at the um, if 
for instance, the uh, Route 53, I will, I will find the same thing. The good thing with Terraform also is once I uh, destroy the branch or merge the branch, when I on the um, destroy uh, command, it will actually clean that. So, which is cool. Uh, there is many ways to do this uh, in other manner uh, using other technologies. This is one of the one of the things we try. I'm not saying that's the the best, uh, the top, but uh, that worked. Yeah. Okay. Now it works. So if I'm going back to uh, this one, so what was the address? So it's Jira dash six seven six eight seven. <coughs> so yeah, so now I have uh, actually a check and login. So I don't know why uh, it crashed, but uh, okay. So now I have uh, our platform with just that feature. So end result, uh, that's that's what we wanted actually. So then the product knows exactly that whatever is described in this feature on the Jira side, it is what it's saying. We don't. It doesn't even have to wonder whether it's uh, this plus that or whatever is gonna bug is gonna find can be related to another feature that's been pushed at the same time. So for us, it's uh, it's a good trade-off and a good in between from. Uh, uh, monolithic to uh, microservices. We would do that. I think this is not going to last for uh, microservices, for instance. Or we have to redefine it. So now I'm. Uh, let's say. Let's imagine that the the guy, uh, the product guy, is okay with this. I'm just going to go and delete the branch. I'm running the uh, Slack uh, job again. How do you manage the state for each uh, terraform view? Terraform, uh, so you know Terraform, right? So he has the uh, state uh, file that is uh, created at the first run. Yeah. So uh, it's we don't change any actual infrastructure in the meantime. So uh, it's just referring to the file he created at the first run. So when it's destroying, it's just going to look at that uh, file that has been saved on the um, uh, our um, uh, integration server. And it's just going to say, OK, this one, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, destroying it. So you look at the Jenkins workspace and nothing. No, we not. so Jenkins, um, so the way it works, we have um, an overlay of a series of scripts that would actually, uh, for each uh, stuff, each um, um, feature, we create a directory, put the stuff in the directory, uh, directory for Terraform, the stuff would be uh, run there. We have a lot of templating happening in the background to, uh, to match the, uh, the DNS kind of stuff and modify the, so we don't even, uh, Terraform is, working in such a way that we have one master file with a lot of uh, placeholders, and then we have profiles, and the profile is generated automatically. And then uh, behind there is a um, I mean templating run. We're using Jinja, Jinja 2, for this, and um, CLI. So now, uh, so if I'm looking back there, if I'm looking back at Jenkins, this one doesn't exist anymore, or shouldn't be existing anymore. Yeah. So I don't have it anymore, right? You don't see it anywhere. And that's the only view I have. If I'm looking back at Amazon, I shouldn't see anything anymore. So my uh, instances should be terminated. So it would be the same with all the resources we, uh, we created for this thing. So, uh, so if I'm going back to the, um, back to the slide, I'll finish quickly. So uh, yeah, so what we are learning from this, it's more like a working prototype than something else, right? It's a proposed approach, but uh, as I say, you have many. So yeah, deploying by feature, nothing is new. Uh, the thing we are tending towards here is immutable infrastructure. So the idea we are trying to illustrate is what about instead of updating your different services with uh, the, your new update, your patch, or whatever, even a new binary, whatever, we just uh, actually rebuild everything from scratch every time. How does it work? So tool like Packers and uh, Terraform helps to do that. And you have other that have been uh, around for some time, like uh, there's this new Spinnaker.io that uh, went last, last month. You have this one called, uh, what's the name? Well, I forgot the name, but you have a few doing this. So that's maybe a way to go towards immutable infrastructure. We are in between, actually. So we deliver by, f by um, feature, not new. 
combined with the uh, immutable infrastructure. I haven't seen that so many times, actually. I'm not even sure uh, I've seen it, actually. So anyone doing it, I'm curious to know. Um, so there's benefits from a business yeah, product perspective. We did it for to sustain the product, actually. So it's cool because we are very responsive compared to what we were before. Uh, in this kind of context, when you build a Java, we are a bit more agile. Uh, not confusion what's actually deployed. You know it's that feature and only that feature. So it's <coughs> getting a lot of uh, questions out of the uh, out of the equation. And uh, yeah, so a branch can be hot fixed when it's approved. So that's a good thing if we need to push it uh, quickly. Technical perspective, yeah, so we leverage on uh, uh, Amazon Web Services, which is uh, super good. And uh, it's uh, more uh, predictable since we are addressing it 100% uh, programmatically. So we are not going in the console, which is nice. Uh, we don't do environment recycling with all the problems you might uh, find with, with this kind of approach. So we are exactly sure what we have. And uh, we are as close as production as we can, of course. And uh, yeah, we're using Packer to craft. So the image that is being uh, used by Terraform to uh, build the system and run the system, it's actually a pre-baked image. So we're not using the Amazon uh, uh, CentOS 7 uh, base image. We already process that image into something else that has the most, I mean, as many common things that we will have in our image. For instance, we up update Hume at that point. We uh, assign the iOS, uh, IOPS at that point of time also for the, for, the, for the image, and a few things like this. A uh, few limits, of course. Um, how to keep track of the full life cycle. Yeah, so there's a lot of, uh, we are increasing the single point of failure doing this. Because the more you add uh, underlying uh, systems, the more you have the kind of prime I have, actually. I, had, I just had. Uh, on the packer side, when you uh, craft the image, yeah, you need to manually describe the targets. So it's a bit tedious to describe all these things. Uh, and Seable is super hard to maintain. To um, The first time you do it, it's fine. But when you need to update it, upgrade, it's becoming a bit more complex. And it's hard to test. It's very hard to test, actually. And you have to do everything manually and test by doing it. So that one is a bit uh, annoying. Terraform also, you have to describe everything manually. So it's uh, very tedious. Dependency on, dependency on Jenkins. Jenkins can be quite uh, tricky. You, have a, you can lose track of how many uh, 10,000 models you put in. You're not really sure what your Jenkins uh, does anymore. So it could be also a problem. Uh, a lot of templating also. And that's the, uh, one of the things that uh, could be avoided. And especially uh, all the dynamic stuff like the EIP uh, addresses and names and DNS and so on and so forth. So many pieces of movement. I'm not sure. So the question is, is it worse? I mean, do we benefit enough to <coughs> take this kind of risk? Because we have m uh, so many pieces in movement. It's, uh, you, you can question it, actually. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't blame you for uh, thinking, actually, it's uh, maybe overkill. Uh, yeah, thinking with the product team. There's a lot of um, communication with the community team to be the product team to be done. And uh, yeah, what else? Enhancements, yeah, we could use more tool to orchestrate. So something a bit higher level. Stackstorm does that, Spinnaker maybe, I don't know. Or build a microservice to do this. We have uh, a lot of things. Uh, choose the branch to build the stack. So now the branch is just, uh, the thing is just going to look for all the branch that have been branched out and it's going to build the stuff. We didn't code it in such a way that we can just do one specific uh, branch. Uh, we need to work more on the uh, Slack side. You cannot uh, Slack argument, so it doesn't work like this. You need to have a man in the middle uh, services that will actually get that uh, command, translate it into something else, and then push the, um, the, the argument for now. Uh, so Ansible is a problem. Toward the Tayo might be a solution, I don't know. And uh, yeah, we are moving to microservices, so how do we move that to cater for uh, microservices? And that's pretty much it. Sorry, I was a bit. Uh, so, thank you very much. Yeah. Nice. Nice talk. Thank you very much. Great.